It had to happen, didn't it? I wasn't originally going to play Rim Effect. Let me be completely clear. I, I haven't really played enough Mass Effect to know enough about what's going on. I've only ever played Mass Effect 2 once. But I thought, look, how can I ignore this mod? It's made by a team of arguably the best modders Rimworld has right now. How can I not play this mod? So I went to the drawing board and I thought I'll build a mod pack with, 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 with very little in the way of gameplay mods, with the exception, of course, of Rim Effect being the, the star of the show, the primary thing, and try and theme it as space-based and as Mass Effect friendly as possible. So I thought back on the brief time that I actually played Mass Effect, and there were only two things that really came to mind. The first one was scanning for resources, and the second was just doing an ungodly amount of drilling all the time. So I've opted to go for the full Rim Effect collection. The Rim Effect Base N7, uh, the extended cut music interface, the whole lot. That I want to be the star of the show, but like I said, I've got some other mods as well that complements it really well. Uh, SRTS, for example. Save our ship too, if we get there, I think could work incredibly well with a Rim Effect playthrough. It is the golden opportunity to build a space station and have our main character endorse the shops on there. As always, I'll have a full installation guide, uh, mod list credits, the whole lot available down in the description. I'll put a Steam Workshop page with the load order download so you can dive in with the same mod pack that I've got. Of course, go and check out the mod pages, especially for Rim Effect in this situation. Go give them a thumbs up and go and take a look at the Vanilla Expanded Team's Patreon as well. Uh, that would definitely help those guys out quite a lot and you get an access to a huge amount of uh, extra behind the scenes things that you might enjoy. Like I was saying, in terms of mods that add new things to the game, it's actually very, very limited. There's Rim Effect, some Vanilla Expanded mods, but not all of them. Uh, Save Our Ship 2, Rim Noughts, one Bionics mod, and honestly, I think that's about it. Lots of gameplay mods and UI mods, uh, by which I mean game tweaks and UI mods. But outside of that, we don't have, you know, the kind of quarry mods or any sort of Bionics overhaul mod because I wanted to focus again on the mechanics added by Rim Effect without upsetting too much of the balance of that experience. So I've thrown together a custom scenario based on the scenario that is default or, or I guess kind of uh, a standard experience to, to play Rim Effect with, and that's the Alliance Colony scenario. So this one will make you an Alliance Colony. Uh, you gain some of the Rim Effect items, Metagel, for example, weapons, armor, uh, an Omni tool, which I believe is an implant. I've taken that and I've added some extra things based on, again, what I said I could remember. Now, because we've got Save Our Ship and because we've got potentially quite a quite a large, expensive end game going on here, um, where we will need a lot of resources, but we have no resource mods, I've decided to start us off with deep drilling, Grand Penetrating Scanners, Low Range Mineral Scanners, and double the speed of deep drilling as well. So we've got access to resources in a more vanilla way, but also, again, ties into one of the few things I do actually remember about Mass Effect. So I thought that was kind of a kind of a nice combo there. So one of the big things added by Rim Effect as well is two new storytellers, which have some very, very unique gameplay associated with them. Absolutely not you. You can stay the hell away from me. So the first storyteller here is Jane Renegade. This is a storyteller that punishes you the more allies you have to encourage a very kind of aggressive play style. Uh, one where you are very isolated and almost kind of a lone wolf. Conversely, you have John Paragon. He will send more bad events the more enemies you have. Now, I'm personally going to go for John Paragon this time because I feel like in almost all of my series, I end up being um, a genocidal maniac, to put it politely. So we are going to go with John Paragon to not only emphasize gaining more allies, but it also adds nicely into the difficulty in that we are going to play with a small planet this time. We do have a lot of faction mods added by a completely separate and incidentally named mod series called Rim Effect Races that came out a bit before this current Rim Effect mod that adds the races from Mass Effect. So I thought it was very appropriate to include into this pack. But because there are so many new factions, I, I want to go small planet size and I want to increase the population. That way, the difficulty is going to be a very naturally... Did I not increase the difficulty there? Come on. Let's go, let's go for rough, at least while we learn some of the mechanics here. So we're going to go for a small planet with a higher population so that we have to be very, very careful about juggling moods of some of these neighboring nations because of course where we settle here is going to be very key to who we end up becoming enemies with who we're going to have to please and more importantly it will tie into that storyteller mechanic right of if we leave it too long and these guys start getting pissed off with how close we are we're gonna to have to try and be friends with them or we're gonna to have to accept the consequences so i thought that was kind of a fun mechanic to tie in there as well where are we going to start then bear in mind if we start someone like this we potentially got six enemy factions right next to us that will 
that would destroy us for the storyteller. We could go for some really, really hard stuff, but not have to worry about the storyteller mechanics then. Now, to be honest, no matter where we settle, we're going to be annoying someone, and that's obviously going to trigger the, the, the negative effects of the storyteller. So I think we need to go somewhere where... Probably close to the default pirate band, right? Because we can never ally with them. But also somewhere on a road would be very, very handy. We could go Savannah. I do want to start on a road tile because that does tie into the storyteller quite nice. If we need to caravan out and give gifts to people to help win them over, that would be quite a nice combo. So, we could always go like over here, Temperate Forest. How many factions would we annoy with that? Only two. So, we'll annoy the Black Partridge, Trom Tr Tr Trosma, whoever those are, and the Vorture Tribes. So, these two here. Minus 57 and minus 80 already. Honestly, that's probably one of the safer bets we could go for. Hey, we could go and, and, and attempt to completely wipe them out if we wanted to. That way we'd avoid the negative effects of the storyteller as well. well. I want to add a little bit of difficulty here. I want a captain for our crew. I want a starting character, a main character to really kick things off. I think that'll be the most fun way to do it. We do have the RPG level up mod. That's one of the few months we've got that had a kind of whole new mechanic system. Thought it was fairly appropriate, given that Mass Effect is an RPG after all. So we're going to random a... Oh, well, I mean, how can I turn down hair like that? One of the only other few things I remember about Mass Effect is N7. So N7, I'm pretty sure, is some sort of combat rank. Uh, N is like special ops, and then 7 is like your skill uh, in combat, 7 being the highest. So these are like the elite troops, the best of the best. So I thought, let's make our own N7 troop. I've used the point limits of prepare carefully because I think it's pretty decently balanced, to be fair. We've got a respected warrior in childhood turned shock trooper. Tough, iron willed desensitized. He's good at combat and social. Okay at medical, but not much else. He's a great captain, a great leader, but we are going to need a crew to serve under him. Battle damage quite heavily, actually. Shredded scar on the head, gunshot on the leg, scar on the torso, and with a bionic there, uh, arm there, too. Maybe you lost it in some combat. We've got 2,844 points remaining. We've got to spend that on, well, something, to be honest with you. Uh, let's take a quick look through the weapons and see what we want to start with. Um, I was kind of looking around this area here. 2,800 is pretty much all we've got at this point, right? We could go for a sniper rifle if we felt like it. Shame we couldn't get a few more points for that space or assault rifle, but it is what it is. Alliance battle rifle, alliance assault rifle. That seems like a safe bet. Now, bear in mind, if we pick that, we've got very few points for food, resources, anything. So we're going to have to be very, very careful starting off here. Can we start with maybe just a few packaged survival meals? I think that's a pretty good idea. How many of those can we actually fit in? And we'll, we'll probably fill the rest out with packaged survival meals and maybe medicine as well, if we can afford one or two. We might just have to go herbal medicine with it, to be honest. Oh, we can fit a couple of regular medicine. Not many. There we are. Pretty much spends all of our points. And there he is. Commander Greg Goatlesson. Our N7 character. Captain of our crew and leader of our Rim Effect playthrough. Is he going to get us into space? Are we going to get horribly murdered? Because as far as I recall with this scenario, you immediately get some sort of threat thrown your way. Ah, hey, there we go. Did have to do a quick restart there because I accidentally left some mod settings on from last series. But here we go. The colony is in ruins. Food stockpiles are nearly empty. Most of the medicine is gone. Walls are crumbling and defenses are faulty. If things carry on like this, chance of meeting the Alliance colonial quota are non-existent. It's time to start the necessary preparations. Begin by setting up a farming zone, repairing the structural damage to the residential module. Power source and defenses should be kept in mint condition and medicine cabinets should always be stocked up if you want to make it on this, this harsh world. Here we are then. Whoa, this is a weird one. So, oh shit, we've already got a raid? Okay. Greg, this is going to be a hell of a start, my friend. Because I had to restart here, though the world is the same in the settings, everything is identical. When you restart a RimWorld world, it will randomize the faction positions and the road generation that isn't seeded. So it is a slightly different layout. We were like, what, down here before? Uh, I moved us up here instead, a grassland, because we rarely play on grassland. It's always temperate forest or apparently last time a swamp, which was unforgivable. We are, this time, right next to the Sovereignty of the Sun. So we are, if we're not careful, going to make enemies of the Empire, which honestly sounds like a horrible idea. No pressure, Greg, but you are up against 13 raiders right off the bat here. Holy crap. Right, let's get ourselves equipped. I think Greg can handle it. I have faith in Greg. The Onus Unification have attacked us. Trying to bring down Greg. Enemies of the Alliance Colonial Initiative. I don't entirely know what that is, but I'm sure that... Oh my god, they can hit us from there. Bring them down, Greg. Bring them down. 
This is chaos. This is already hell. Get out of there. Get out of there. Holy crap. Okay, one's down. One's down. Pull back. If we can capture any, get them on board. Maybe convince them to join us and, and, and turn against their pirate ways. That would be quite handy. Oh, shit, Greg. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm so sorry, Greg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we have... What is this here? A high explosive armor shredding projectile. Whoa. Carnage. I don't even know what that's from. That sounds incredible. Okay, let's not worry about that. Let's keep that as our ace in the hole then. Let's move around here. And if we're getting overwhelmed, we can always rely on that after the fact. Okay, they're getting a bit close here. Oh, we're getting overwhelmed, Greg. Okay, let's see if we can put some distance between us and them. Thank God for that armor. Now might be a time to test this thing out, whatever it is. Get out of there, get out of there. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Let's go like that. Oh, it actually did hit. Did you see that? That's kind of cool. One of the mechanics in this is the... I, I think they're called biotics from... Oh, no. <laughs> Greg, poor Greg can't catch a break. The biotics from the Mass Effect trilogy, which are these kind of, um, for lack of better word, uh, psionic powers... It's probably the, probably the best way to phrase it. Almost kind of psychic powers in a way. So I believe... Th I mean, that could be one of those. Could be a side effect of our armor. Not entirely sure. As much as I'd love to check. Let's clear out these guys first. And then we can try and break down exactly what's going on. Man, talk about a high tension start. They're burning down the solar panels. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't do that. They're fleeing. They're fleeing. They're fleeing. Finish them off, Greg. Send them a message. We don't cooperate with pirates here. Okay, let's put out that fire bloody fast too. Holy crap. Thank God he was an elite N7. Otherwise, that would have ended. That would have ended way worse. So we've got these prefab solar collectors here. Power output 960. That one's in a mountain, which I'll be honest, there's no wonder this bloody base failed if that's what you're doing with it. 1,920. Damn, that's a lot of what that's a that's a lot of wattage from that. And then we've got ourselves a little base here that we want to go and uh oh, there's a door lock policy. That's kind of cool. Uh well, let's go and take a quick look what we've got in the base then what we've got is a kind of starting point here let's also turn on south end i think that's probably not a bad idea steel space attack research bench oh cool wow so some sort of powered research bench as our starting point there 500 watts needed we've got briefing table very fancy and we've got a couple of bedrooms here as well steel prefab large plant pot oh congratulations greg oh the dust is settled greg is mostly healed let's start working on our colony then so i wanted to go for a grassland some sort of open map because of course we are going to be building a ship what i'd really love to do is is kind of go back to the idea i i joked about but actually would be kind of cool building a space station where we can where we can start our really start building our crew up from as soon as possible i think would be very very cool even if it's small in scope and expand out from there that would be awesome no, i won't lie starting with zero construction stat is going to be a real special experience but we we had to find a nice trade-off there and like I said, I do think the points value from Prepare Carefully is pretty decently balanced. We got a very powerful soldier, which allowed us to survive there. The guy single-handedly took down, you know, 11, 12 people. But now going ahead without any extra help with any extra colonists, this is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So we've got these things here called prefab components. Now, these essentially allow us to build, funnily enough, prefabs, pre prefabricated buildings, uh, structures, whatever that happens to be. Here we go. We've got doors, structures, and columns in this particular situation. Now, these are stronger, but they do require the components to build slightly less of the kind of secondary resource. So we could just build regular steel walls. Those are, what, 500 hit points a piece? 600 hit points a piece. Whereas these prefab walls for a component and the steel are 1,000 each. So much more durable, much stronger. But of course, we do require those components to... Uh, we can't even build a door. Right. See, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> can build the prefab walls right okay just just wanted to double check there let's move this stuff in here and we'll use this as our uh as our primary base i'd love to check inside the ancient danger you know what greg might be good enough to deal with it to be completely honest now this desensitized trait is actually very very good greg is hardened through what can only be presumed as old emotional trauma they feel absolutely nothing from lost animals colonists family prisoners or dead bodies I assume it's kind of like the uh, the psychopath trait, right? But has a bit more of a benefit in that you can form, hopefully, meaningful relationships with people. Particularly as I do have a mod that would allow us to form uh, meaningful relationships. What have we got in here? We've got a little bit more to our base. Prefab armchair. Oh, you know what? This would make a much nicer bedroom, Greg. Maybe we'll get things reinstalled down here and uh, maybe knock this through, turn it into a workroom instead. So the charge here we've got, the high explosive armor shredding projectile comes from our from our armor, the N7 armor. So that could be very, very powerful against mechanoids. 
To be honest, I'm kind of hoping that's what's in here. Let's take a quick peek. Hello? What, what is that? A geth. Oh, I do remember those. The geth are the enemies from, uh, from Mass Effect. They're kind of the, the primary antagonists. Okay, this is going to be interesting then, isn't it? Uh, can we go for one of those? Can we... Okay, so we have to fire it at the ground. Are they going to go into cover? Can we lead our shot here? <gasps> Whoa, okay. That's quite damaging. Holy crap. What is that you've got there? M76 Revenant. Wow, okay, okay, okay. Let's take some cover back here. Let's be careful, Greg. I'm kind of hoping they'll stop moving, take some cover, and then we can fire this, uh, this shredding shot off at them. This works fine. Alternatively, if they could get out of cover entirely, that'd be pretty good. We've got a couple hop behind this barricade. It's almost over. It's almost dead. Run, run, run. What a kill from Greg. What a kill from Greg. It did smash one of our shelves, but honestly, I think that's a small price to pay there. How are you doing? 13 conditions need tending. We took a hell of a lot of shot there. Wow. Okay, let's get you tended up, Greg, and let's see what we got for our, our reward then. We've got ourselves a couple of weather normalization devices from Save Our Ship 2, right? Yeah, these things are so, so good. It ends all ongoing weather effects. The satellites are capable of rapidly dispersing toxic fallout, ending heat waves and cold snaps, and providing local relief from volcanic winters. So if we get something that is really disrupting early on here while we're trying to build ourselves up, that will, that will solve the problem in no time. What a great guy. Commander Greg. It occurred to me he lost the title of Commander then. There we go. So this is the Omni tool then. How does this work? A multi-purpose diagnostic and manufacturing tool as well as a computer used for a variety of civilian and battlefield tasks. This implant can be upgraded through several levels. Oh, so it's an implant then. Use Omni tools to use tech abilities. Oh, interesting. Hang on. So we just we just throw it on there, eh? Nice. Omni tool level one. There we are on his arm now. Oh, nice. That's fantastic. So, I don't, again, I don't remember a huge amount about Mass Effect, but I do remember this thing be, being your, you know, the, the, the big thing for the player, right? So, we've got a combat drone available. This one's a combat drone turret, which explodes after a short amount of time. That is fantastic for little Commander Greg. I don't know if these were like the Remod Royalty Bionics at all, whereby we might have just got random power there, and, and that one just happens to be a very useful one for us right now when we're by ourselves. But I know that you can upgrade it and get all sorts of uh, various new powers for that. Let's start tidying up this base then. Let's get everything uh, Let's get everything sorted out pretty fast. And then when we've got, I think, our basic farm set up, we'll probably throw something down over here. We'll start cracking open these and uh, seeing if we can start recruiting ourselves a crew. Do you want to give them a little bit of time to heal first, just in case they are... <laughs> just in case they are hostile. So let's turn this into our stockpile then. We'll get rid of... Oh, uh, you know what? We'll keep that one. Let's go ahead and store that in his bedroom. We'll take, this, uh, we'll take this standing lamp too. Oh, that's quite frustrating. So these have spawned in under the mountain roof. And we can't reinstall them. So this one we might as well take apart. This one we can remove the roof over and get a good 60% power output from that. Let's go ahead and go remove roof area on you. This one, though, is, is going to keep us going for a good while. This one's outputting 1,920 watts, even though it is slightly covered over there as well. 2,400 watts. Yeah, that's fantastic. Grid excess of 4,320. That'll be all we need to start with here. Can we reinstall this turret? You know what? Where it is right now, that isn't terrible. As long as we remove this wall pretty soon, we've got, it gives us a pretty good... Uh, it was a pretty good arc of cover, and it's also well defended there. I want to take a quick look through the architect menu and just see what they've added into all of the various different categories here. So under beds, we've got prefab beds and wooden prefab beds. We have, oh, look at these. Steel colonial floors. Obviously, we can't build any of them yet because Commander Greg is good at one thing and one thing only. Uh, wow, look at all of this. Prefab wardrobes. Those look quite cool. Prefab wall lights. Finally. Finally, wall lights. There's a huge amount of furniture in this, none of which we can build, tragically, but we'll get there eventually. I'm sure that one of the people in the uh, in the crypto sleep caskets up there can build some of this stuff. We've got a prefab generator. How does that work? A safer, cleaner way of producing energy for your base. This device efficiently converts uranium into electrical power. Oh, nice. Like a very, very small nuclear generator then. Prefab equipment is vital for getting a new settlement up and running. Oh, very nice. Okay. Uh, production. We've got... Space Attack Research Bench, because we've got one of those up there. The Manufacturing Bench. Whoa, those are huge. Wow. Um, we've got a prefab stove there as well. Right, okay, we'll have to remember that. We are using Docsworld to reorganize menus. Of course, this is uh, it's a relatively new mod, so some of it might not be tagged for the correct category quite yet. Then we have our Save Our Ship things. If you want to get up there and uh, build a space station at some point, that could... I could be good to get done early. What's we got here? Orbital relay from... Oh, right. Mining car. Again, it is it is kind of space-themed here. So we do have some uh, kind of spaceship-esque mods. Body bags. 
prefab components plastic bag used for containing the remains of a deceased individual well i've just decided to dig a mass grave to be honest with you um for the time it really makes no difference of course to commander greg he's desensitized this type of thing he's seen enough war thought we better start with the deconstruction just to try and give him any sort of skill in construction before we wasted a load of resources we've got it to level 2.13 oh shit oh hey that's pretty nice. Uh, to be honest, we could capitalize on that and make them work a lot more just to just to really kick things off here. We haven't obviously started planting any crops yet. I have planned them out, but there's just so much other stuff to do. I'm just going to get these bodies gone first, especially before we wake up the people in the caskets. I think the worst thing to see when you wake up is just a, a mountain of corpses and this one guy coated in blood. The hell, that was fast. Another raid already. The Covenant of Comarero. This is probably going to be quite large, bearing in mind the last one. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a naked man with a club. Yeah, one or the other. This will be our default remote starting raid then, I see. We've also got what appears to be another ancient danger up there that I might go and crack open straight away. Honestly, why not? What the hell's going on here? Some visitors passing through. Hello, don't mind me. Just going to go and murder this man. Yep, that'll... That'll probably do it. Is he any good? Are you good at building? Uh, I mean, yeah, really. You aren't bad. Undergrounded dog person, misandrous dunce. What is dunce? They learn a lot slower and they're much worse at social. Um... I could probably do something with that. A construction single passion. It would certainly take Greg a long time to get up to that skill level. Turn Greg's bedroom into a, into a temporary prison so that we can try and recruit this guy as fast as possible just to help out with the to help out with the massive construction we were expected to do here. Let's see if we can patch him up. You're not going to die on me, are you? Didn't blow anything off? He's got a peg leg. Oh, it's a bit annoying, but we'll be all right. Well, fortunately for us, all those raiders had the decency to die carrying three meals each. So we've got a good uh, 56 package survival meals right now, which is pretty fantastic. Oh, hello. Look, it's that guy from Mass Effect. Oh, God, I don't remember any of their names. There's Garrus and um, the blue lady. Um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and crack open a cold one with the boys then and see what we've got. Okay, this could be uh, this could be ancients, hostile ancients. Uh, it's not. What the hell are we looking at here then? We've got three dead people. Waf Vizul, a slave of the ancients, a male quarian. Construction of eight double passion, very nice. Mining of 13 single passion. Medical, social, groundbreaker, transhumanist, and greedy. Incapable of... Oh, God. Well, to be fair, if we just have you as mining and, and construction... We can do a lot with you. Okay, we've got Duel, who is incapable of dumb labor and skilled labor. Good as a doctor, I suppose. Ah, oh, beautiful and neurotic. Neurotic's very good. They're a gigolo. Well, you could come in handy elsewhere. Come in handy, Bing. Maybe a little more literal than I intended. And then we've got Janosh, shooting a four. Melee seven, construction seven, and mining of seven as well. Not bad, intellectual crafting, firefighting disabled there. Chemical interest, psychopath, and dunce. Man, they're all kind of cool characters. I mean, this guy's high priority. This guy's very, very good at doctoring, and we could probably set him up as a researcher as well. Neurotic plus intellectual, though he's only got the low intellectual, it's, it's pretty good when coupled with that. I'm not sure what I'll do with you, though. Another construction of mining. I suppose if we're going quite hard on the deep drilling, that could be handy. I think I'll just throw down some beds in here, and we'll just rescue them. And then if they don't agree to stay, Commander Greg might um, conscript them, for lack of a better word. He needs all the help he can get here. All right, let's get them rescued as soon as possible. And then we'll start tending to them in, I think, priority of who's most useful. Well, actually, we could, I suppose, go in priority of people who's going to die first. That's probably not a bad idea. Jewel has recovered and decided to leave. And so has Waf Vesul. Uh, no. No, I don't think I agree to that, actually. Oh, no. Why have all the beds turned orange? 100% chance. Yeah, look. I need your help here. You're being conscripted. You think Greg could build a bed without fucking it up? <laughs> I think the simple answer to that is no, but we'll give it a go anyway. What about one of these prefab end tables? And then prefab dresses. I assume these prefab components are going to be kind of easy to... Um, are going to be kind of easy to come by eventually. So I'm all right with that. We shouldn't use that phrase when we're playing a Mass Effect themed playthrough. Oh, he actually did an okay job there. Poor quality. Fucked up the end table, but that's all right. Look at this. Pure luxury. What's the comfort here out of interest? 0 0.94. Oh, jeez. Well, look, he tried. He gave it his best. He gave it his best effort. I think he's got the skill to build beds for the prisoners. Well, look, let's give it a go. We could always turn this into a barracks later on as well. It's quite a 
It's quite a luxury room we've got going on here. Greg slowly winning them all over here. We've got 5.8 resistance left on David Duel. Waf Vizal Narkunil, 18.8. Two. Holy shit, two left on this guy. We actually might get a... Look, we might get a new recruit by the end of today. Come on. Can't even build chairs. Steel square chairs require construction four. Prefab chairs require construction five. All we've got is the... The square dining chairs from more furniture. <laughs> Greg might be a stone cold killer, but my God, is he shit in every other aspect of life. Look at this medical emergency. Malnutrition. Uh, hey, feed the... Feed the prisoners. Ah. Oh. Batarian expatriates. Hello? We good? Oh, damn. They've got assault weapons already. Holy crap, Greg. Okay, okay. Let's just get behind this cover. And I think you'll be fine. We've dealt with a lot worse than this. We've just got to be very careful if we are going to be up against people with assault rep weapons basically around the clock now. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> that doesn't even hurt, says the dead body. Come on. Watch out for Garros. Extremely cursed Garrus. Oh, look, you see the Omni tool on his arm, then. Oh, that was cool. We only got to see it briefly. Damn, I wish I'd noticed that sooner. Is that in uh, in melee that that shows up? There we go. Zero resistance remaining. This guy's down to like four now, I think it was. 4.7. Brexos or, or Brexos is down to 12.3. And then Wafazul is down to 16.8. And all the best crew, but Greg's winning over their heart and minds. Honestly, that's all he needs. He doesn't ask for the best soldiers. He just needs loyalty. Could be it. Hey, that was it. Fantastic. There we go. First name that appeared on my list of many, many reward names is Blue Steak Boris. And I knew that was going to pop up. This is where you guys come in. Let's go for a name of our brand new faction led by Commander Greg. A name for, I guess, our our crew, our our ship eventually, of course. And this particular settlement as well. I, I, like I said, I do want to focus on building a space station as soon as possible here. All we've got to do is get kind of good research under us. And then we can really focus down on that. So... Send me your ideas, and I'll take my favorite ones, the most upvoted, whatever happens to catch my eye from this episode as our names for both the settlement and the faction. So we're absolutely going to have Blue State Boris take over the construction job. That is absolutely massive. I might not have him harvest. Uh, we can have him grow. That's okay. Mining's fine. Hauling, cleaning. Love to get some researching done, but I think we'll wait until we've got a few more dedicated characters first. Uh, we sit down to three on duel as well. We'll give this room a bit of a clean, I think. That'll, uh, just raise their mood a little bit there. So this is exactly what I'm talking about with this storyteller. Because of where we've settled, we are losing faction relations actively. Of course, eventually that will cause them to become hostile. And then the storyteller gets a lot harder. So we have to either work to keep these guys on side or accept the additional difficulty there. So Galatia, the faction of the Sovereignty of the Sun is minus 10. And Plaindale of Enkindler's Legacy, another minus 10 there as well. Honestly, the Empire is generally kind of scary in base game room world, but given that this is more of an ultra tech level mod collection we've got going on, especially room effect itself is, is it much more inherently ultra tech than than base game room world, we probably won't have so much of a problem with them. They'll still be troublesome, but they won't be so scary as they normally are. Got another raid there from the Solarian Settlers. Okay, we've got flak armor, kind of assault weaponry bot action rifles there. Okay. Well, let's see how we get on. I've got Greg already in position next to the turret ready to go. I was thinking we'll get a gun for Blue State Boris when he's finished with his beer in your own time, pal. Get him equipped, but we'll have him ready as a kind of emergency backup. I don't want to get him on the front line when he's got no armor. Well, he hasn't got any bloody clothes, let alone armor. They're on it. What is that turret then? What do you do? Mass accelerator turret. Advanced turret utilizing scaled down mass accelerators, providing highly effective light and anti infantry defense for outposts and colonies. Oh, wow. Okay. And those are built, I assume, with uh, more prefab components. We actually haven't got the research to uh, to build them yet. I'm kind of dreading the research tree. So I think it's going to add a lot of stuff that I just straight up don't recognize. So we'll take a look at that in a second then. We should be fine here. We've actually got cover now. And he did absolutely fine before when he didn't have cover. I've mined all this area out soon. Kind of opened it up to be a bit more convenient. Nice. There we go. Let's get these chunks moved out of the way for next time though. Good shit. We've actually knocked one. Dakarf Mayaban. Good intellectual and a passion for it too. Good cooking. Shit, I actually really want to recruit this guy. If we can not kill him, that'd be ideal. Greg. Greg, get him. I'd actually really love to recruit this guy because of his research skill, but the cooking as a backup too is phenomenal. Let's get you on board then. 
So, speaking of the research tree, why don't we take a look and see what we've actually got going on here. Oh, I like the uh, kind of semi-transparent research tree. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, crap. <laughs> this is absolutely gigantic. Okay. Uh, okay, that, that all looks about right. Oh, look at all this. So, this is all the rim effect stuff here. Prefab solar panels, element zero, right? That's what the uh, the kind of fuel, the propulsion or something like that, isn't it? It's also the, uh, there you go, there's the high-tech body implants, the Omni tool there as well. Biotic amplifier. Let's receive biotic abilities. Whoa, cool. Ammunition modification. Oh, wow. God damn, there's so much to see. Then we've got SRTS. There we've got the N7 stuff, the really, really high tier stuff there. This is all of the, I, I believe this is all the save our ship things as well. My god, this is a, I mean, just look at the tech tree and how balanced it is over towards the right-hand side once, over to those Ultratech and Arcotech level technologies. Whoa. This is cool. I, I try and keep tech trees normally very balanced across the board, but this is going to be much more of an endgame focus, uh, endgame focus run here. I specifically didn't want to include too much to detract away from the rim effect. Obviously, save our ship and rim effect works really, really well together. Um, I might, however, go and get some... Maybe linkables, like research boosting mods and things like that, just because there is so much to see here. Crap. I maybe would have started with a bit more early game research had I known how much end game stuff there was in this. No, I think we're going to have to expand the rice farm out. I didn't want to go too crazy with it, given that we only have one guy and 60 meals in storage, but all of those are already gone. So let's get this uh, covering all of this rich soil. Duels resistance has been broken too. We've already made a great headway into the start of our new crew. I think this is going to be incredible. I can't wait to get a kind of space station style dried up built up there. Normally, I always go for kind of a large ship and launch it off. But I love the idea of getting a space station where we can start building up resources instead. I think it could be a lot of fun. And then and then build and design a ship up there and send that out. Maybe even use this planet as our home base. Try and wipe out the Empire. Ally with all of the factions here. That would be incredible given the storyteller. And then explore the galaxy with, with a kind of... I don't want to say Citadel. But I am thinking we're going to build a citadel up there and uh, use that as the base of our new uh, as our uh, of our new empire led by Commander Greg. So, in conclusion, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for for tomorrow when we will dive back into Commander Greg's adventures. Here, I really want to start working on the research tree tomorrow, taking a look at all these new technologies and this uh, insane amount of endgame stuff we've got to play around with. Don't forget story names for the faction as well on this particular ground settlement, and then eventually we'll need something for our ship and our space station to there. And of course, if you if you can, go and have a look over at the Vanilla Expanded Patreon. And of course, subscribe to the mods and give them all a like and a favorite. And just show us basically some support for all of these very talented and skilled modders who have come together to produce this incredible new experience for us all to enjoy. So thank you guys, the modders, that is. And thank you at home for watching as well. And I've got to give a thank you to the patrons who, who make what I do here possible as well. So big thank you goes out to... Uh, Average Nobody, JT, 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 Master Rob, Grey Plays, Looper, Shotgun Diplomacy, Tinseled Cloth, Low Res Quail, Dan, Texas Yardbird, This Be Willis, Crimson, Dot, 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 Mad Marl, Facundo Vasquez, and Coddles for their support. The executive producer tears over on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for allowing me to make, what, like five edited episodes a day now? I don't know what I'm up to. I lose track. <laughs> thank you as well to... Gavin, Arrogant Awesome, Craigon, Jeebus Crust, Icy the Great, Ari098, Hottie Sphinx, Infectious, Atreus Sen, Adam S, Naya Ragupin, hope I said that right, Plumby, Metman, Pim, Boomer in a Pink Beanie, Papa Snow, and Salakin J.